Hey everyone, Ben the Bar Guy, back with another video to help you make better drinks. And today, we're gonna do a video about the five annoying things that mixologists do. It certainly isn't a comprehensive list, but it's five things I think stand out most when hotshot bartenders at your cocktail bar think they're better than they are at their craft and what they should do instead. I hope you enjoy it, and as always, let's make better drinks. This is a video of the five most annoying things that mixologists do. I should start with what is a mixologist and is it a word that you wanna use? As a guest at my bar or on this channel, you can call me a mixologist all you want. That's perfectly fine. Uh, whatever helps the guest explain what I do, as in making cocktails, is perfectly fine. However, in the bartending industry, it has become a little apropos to say the word mixologist. And the reason is very simple. It effectively leaves out the guest out of the equation. When you bar you're tending the bar and that includes everything from making drinks to helping the guests with what they need figuring out how to give great service mixology etym etymology is essentially the study of mixing which isn't really what bartenders do or if it is it's a very tiny part of what bartenders do so I always call my bartenders bartenders and not mixologists but it certainly isn't offensive to be called a mixologist it just it's too small of a word to encompass what I expect my bar staff to do I will lead with that in order to explain the difference between a bartender and a mixologist. All right, here we go. Number one, most annoying thing that mixologists do, they worry a little too much about their garnish. Now I should say, this doesn't, this doesn't qualify to all garnish. There's two types of garnish. The first is garnish as ingredients, and the second is garnish as a peacock's tail. I really am not talking here about garnish as an ingredient. What I mean by that is, if you serve me an old fashioned and it doesn't have an orange peel, which some people would qualify as a garnish, then it's not an old fashioned. And then the reason is that orange peel is actually an ingredient. The same would go for a Negroni, for instance. Another example would be mint in a mojito. A mojito just simply isn't a mojito unless it's garnished with mint. A julep is another example. Those are what we call garnish as ingredients. So when I talk about being worried about garnish, we do worry about garnish as ingredients, but what we don't worry about is garnish as peacock's tails. That's more of the showy, over-the-top garnishes that you see at bars. Now, if someone wants to make something pretty on top of a drink, I'm all for it. The problem is when it gets to be a little too long and a little too annoying, and you're making the guests wait for their cocktail while you make some car of George Washington out of a lemon peel. It just simply isn't necessary, and I would prefer just serve the drink as simply as possible. Garnish is ingredient, essential, worry about it. Garnish is peacock's tail, less important. Make sure it's simple, straight to the point. It's cut quickly. It doesn't hold down or bring down service. It doesn't get in the way of the guests, and it doesn't take away from the drink itself. Okay, number two, annoying thing that mixologists do. They don't handle glassware by the base. And oftentimes, they'll spend a long time making a beautiful drink, grip it with the claw like this, and then put it down in front of a guest. This is a big no-no. First of all, no drink that I know of is garnished with finger salt. So let's keep that finger salt off where people put their mouths. But in addition, if you're serving a drink like this, you're gonna make people sick because you're, that means you're probably picking it up like this when it's dirty after somebody's already drunk on it. Especially now with the advent of cold, chilled, or frozen glassware, there's zero reason to be putting your fingerprints on a glass. So always, always, always serve your drinks at the lowest possible point you can hold it to avoid fingerprints on frozen glassware, but also keep your fingers as far away from where people are going, going to put their mouth or already have put their mouth. All right, guys, the number three annoying thing that mixologists do is they love to sell you the sacred slaughter. You mean an old fashioned with Pappy? I'll do that. 
Mississippi. What's the sacred slaughter? Well, the sacred slaughter is using booze that's really, really old, vintage, or maybe even just really expensive by itself to put in a cocktail. And it's all wrong. First of all, cocktails were invented when booze was really bad. So cocktails are intended at their very core to make bad booze taste better. And for me, I live for the opportunities to taste really nice, old or vintage or delicious spirit neat. That is the goal. Cocktails are the bridge to that goal. So what I don't want you guys to do is take your really expensive whiskey, like your Pappy 15, and put it in an old fashioned. Pappy 15 is great by itself. Now, if you own the whiskey and you wanna put it in old fashioned, have at it. But when a mixologist pushes it on people, I get upset. I think it's ridiculous. If a guest wants it, great. If a mixologist says, have you ever had Pappy 15 in an old fashioned, just be annoyed. Also, the more citrus or the more bitter the cocktail is, like in a, in a Negroni, the less you're going to taste the booze, the more adulterated the cocktail will be. So try and avoid, if anything, if you are gonna use nice booze, try and make it an old fashioned, something with very light touches of ingredients that then lets the booze express itself. You get to taste whatever it is that makes that booze valuable. This is a Pappy 15. You might also see a mix, I'll just push something like vintage, like this is a 1970s old crow bourbon that's seven years old. If this whiskey was put into an old fashioned, again, you'd be you'd be wasting the fact that it's vintage and has this special characteristic on it. So if you wanna do them because you own the booze, have at it, but if mixologists that push it on people or make menus full of them, I think they're pretty obnoxious. All right guys, the number four thing that's annoying that mixologists do is they like to flare. Flare? Yeah, whenever possible, bro. Now flare, it's not always bad. If you're at a place that was known for flare, like Fridays in the 80s, or if you're at a place and you just see a bottle get flipped every once in a while, that's not flare. But a lot of bartenders get into flare in order to show off and be about them. But what they don't realize is they're wasting the guest time. By flipping bottles without making them faster, it might be a show, and some people may be even showing up for that show, but the rest of the people are constantly waiting for their drink. So you have to be very careful. If you're a flare bartender, that's great, but you're more of a juggler than you are a bartender when you're doing that and that doesn't make you good at being a bartender they're two different things so I think as a bartender you should be putting the most emphasis on being fast and efficient at getting people their drinks because it's the guest time not yours and if you want to flare go be a juggler somewhere the number five annoying thing that makes all just tend to do is they treat themselves too much like artists hello welcome to the joy of painting cocktails Today we will let inspiration flow through us and let serendipity create a cocktail of our dreams. We'll start with Armagnac. And next we'll pour some green chartreuse made from the whispers of Buddhist monks. And remember, there are no mistakes, only shots at staff meeting later. And finally for this cocktail, I'm going to add Happy Van Winkle 12, except no substitute for the finest Bourbon. This cocktail will be topped with freshly crushed ice. <coughs> Et voila! Art as cocktails. Art as art as cocktails. My mentor, Sasha, was fond of saying that cocktails aren't art, they're a craft. And I think the two things are a little bit dovetailed. At times, someone might be making a cocktail into art, and we should respect that. If they wanna do high-minded, molecular gastronomy type cocktails, then it really is getting to the point of being an art project. Those bars, I give a pass to. That's what they're about, that's their attraction. When a bartender is at a regular bar, is making garnishes that look like Asian birds, or they think that everything is an experience expression of themselves. I think they are overdoing what's just a craft. The difference between art and a craft is that art takes creativity more often. And craft is more about practice, doing something over and over and over again until you perfect it the right way. And so 99.99% of the time, cocktails are about being a craft. 
something that you do over and over again perfectly each and every time. And that doesn't mean from time to time you can't do an art project with cocktails. It just means your job every day is less about art and far more about doing your craft. Stay focused on doing the same things over and over again very well. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoy that video, the five annoying things that mixologists do. I will see you soon in other videos. Feel free to give me a comment, argue with me. If you think uh, the annoying thing I pointed out today is really necessary and mixologists should be doing it, or if you think mixologists as a word isn't a bad word and that you're mad at me yo tell me I want to I want to talk with you guys about it I hope you guys enjoyed the video I hope it creates some conversation and until next time to better drinks hey everyone thanks for watching Ben the bar guy videos and if you want to keep the videos coming maybe hit me with a subscribe over there or click on one of these videos over here all of which will keep this bar craft going into posterity till next time Nux beer mug daiquiri